Hello, my name is Phil. I'm the priest in charge of the Draycott and Lem Valley benefices. And um, today, uh, Saturday, 2nd of July, um, a group of us are going away to think about church, to think about our vision, to think about our mission, to think a little bit about what the future may hold and what we might look like going forwards. Um, and I've pre-recorded the first talk uh, that I'm going to give on that on our away day. Um, so that's what you're seeing now. Uh, then in due course, there'll be other videos uh, popping up from the away day. Uh, but this is the one that I can put out now, kind of in real time, as it were, because uh, later videos uh, will depend on the kind of the feedback uh, we get and what people say sort of on the day. Uh, but this is my kind of opening talk uh, from the day, which I'm sharing on Facebook and on YouTube for those that are unable to join us. Uh, so I'm just going to share my screen with you um, just to allow you uh, to see the PowerPoint that is um, that accompanies uh, this talk. So uh, I've entitled first talk of the day, what is a benefice? Because uh, we start to think about what our new life as a benefice of eight churches is going to be like. It's important that we get our heads straight around what is a benefit. So that seemed like the obvious place to start our away day, thinking about the future uh, and thinking about plans. The only slight hitch uh, with starting here is that I don't actually know what a benefit is. because uh, I've not really been able to find a definition of benefit written down anywhere. Uh, the, best, uh, the best definition of a benefit I've been able to find is from the Crockford's um, directory which says this, a benefice is the parish or group of parishes served by one incumbent. I mean, you can't fault it, that is, that is what it is and that is what we are. Uh, but I was hoping to find something a little bit more inspiring with a little bit more depth to it. Maybe something about parishes working together in mission or churches with common values um, or partnership in worship or something uh, kind of, to do with church and, and what it's for, but um, sharing a vicar seems to be the best I could find in terms of what a benefice is. Uh, so because I couldn't find any kind of resources or definitions around benefices, I thought, what else is there in Christianity and in the church that no one really understands how it works, um, but they know it's important and they know it's real. Uh, and that's, uh, <laughs> why I want to start by thinking a little bit about the Trinity. I thought maybe the one God who's in three distinct persons could show us a little bit about what it is to be one benefit with eight distinct churches. Uh, so I don't know if you've seen this before. This is a diagram that explains um, how the Trinity, well, not exactly how it works, but kind of the complexity of the spirit of the um, Trinity. Because at the heart of the doctrine of the Trinity is the fact there is one God and three distinct persons uh, and their relationships is summed up here. So you've got God. So God, the Father is God. God, the Son is God and God, the Holy Spirit is God. Uh, but God, the Father is not the Son. Uh, the Son is not the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is not God, the Father. Uh, lots of really clever people have tried to come up with how to explain this, how to understand this. Uh, and there's lots of different analogies uh, that go around, uh, whether that is the analogy of water being ice, uh, steam and um, liquid water, or whether that's a four leaf clover, a three leaf clover. Uh, there's all sorts of different ones to do the rounds. None of them tends to work. There's always a problem with every analogy we come up with. Usually it's because they overemphasize the distinctiveness. So they lose the fact there's one God because they're looking at the three distinct ones, or it's the reverse, they overemphasize the unity without properly unpacking the distinctiveness. Um, so most of uh, most images you see will be heretical in some way, and I make, um, therefore, the appropriate apologies, apologies that what I'm about to show you is probably heretical, uh, but I think it will probably be heretical in a different way to the way that a lot of the ones we look at are heretical. Okay, so with that disclaimer out of the way, um, I think the Holy Trinity is a little bit like the A-team. 
Um, so if I were to take that diagram we were looking at earlier and change it to be about the 18, uh, you could say that John Hannibal Smith is not Templeton Peck and Templeton Peck is not uh, B. A. Baracus, Mr. T, and then Mr. T is not John Hannibal Smith. However, they are all the A team. Um, so I think we, we can get the distinctiveness, don't we? They are three distinct uh, people there on our charts. However, how are they also the same? Well, I put it to you that if you see this picture um, of Mr. T, and I ask you what's this picture from, you would say the A team, even though you can't see the other members of the A team when you see Mr. T with his chains um, and his hands in the air like that you say that is the A team. So in a sense, we can say that Mr. T is fully A team. And I think the same um, also goes for Hannibal when he's smoking a, a cigar and saying, I love it when a plan comes together. So I think Hannibal is also fully A team, even if the others aren't present, you look at that picture and you go A team. Uh, the other two members of the A team is where this falls apart because no one can remember who they are or what they look like. And I know this is slightly flippant because, of course, the A team isn't a great analogy for the Trinity because there's four of them for a start. However, when we think about the A team and we think about the Trinity, it might be helpful to look at both of them and what it means to be an, a benefit. Because we're never going to completely understand the complexities of Trinity. But when we look at how they interact with each other, which actually, as we'll see in a moment, quite similar to how the A team interact. Uh, we will get a sense of how each member of the Trinity has a distinct role. So to unpack this a little bit more, uh, we're going to have a look at Matthew 28 verses 16 to 20, which I'm sure uh, many of you will be familiar with. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. As I said, some of you will be quite familiar with that passage, uh, especially if you've got really good memories, because that's the passage that I took our five purposes of church from way back in January, February time, uh, when I first uh, started as your priest in charge. And don't worry, we'll be going back to them shortly. However, as well as telling us what church is for, it also tells us a little bit about the Holy Trinity and how the Holy Trinity works. Um, so in verse 18, it said, it has Jesus saying, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That authority comes from God the Father, because his role is the planner and the orchestrator. So in the A team, Hannibal is the one who smokes the cigar. You can see him up there and says, I love it when a plan comes together. And that's kind of what God the Father does. He's the man with the plan who can see how everything weaves together and knows the plan. And going back to our reading in verse 20, Jesus instructs the disciples to teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And this touches on Jesus's role in salvation. Jesus came to earth and he taught his disciples, didn't he? And it's not mentioned in our passage, but also he died on the cross so that we could be forgiven. So if we're thinking in A team's terms, then I think we're thinking about Mr. T. Mr. T uh, go back to him, is the team's strong man. He's the one who does stuff, who gets his hands dirty and makes things happen. Then we, uh, staying in verse 20, Jesus promises that surely I am with you always to the very end of the age, which is an allusion to the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, where uh, the Holy Spirit comes to equip and empower the church. And if we really want to push the A-team analogy, then maybe that makes the Holy Spirit like Templeton Peck, who, according to Wikipedia, is their pilot, usually called Face or Face Man. He's a smooth talking con man who serves as the team's appropriator of vehicles and other useful items. So both uh, Templeton Peck and the Holy Spirit are there to equip uh, the rest of the team and those around them. So it's fair to say that the three persons in the Trinity have distinct roles. 
Uh, but as we always see when we talk about the Trinity, nothing is ever quite as neat as that. The Holy Spirit does make things happen and Jesus does make plans and strategies. Uh, but broadly speaking, these distinct roles um, are helpful and, and accurate and a good way of trying to distinguish between the different members of the Trinity and how they're different, uh, but unified. We can't simply boil the Trinity down to these parts and put them in the neat boxes, but I think they serve our purposes if we do that, especially as we start to think about how we might operate as a benefit. So moving on to think about the benefits in, in light of the Trinity, uh, that chart that we had for the Trinity and that we had for the A-team could similarly work uh, for us. Um, we could actually have to be 10 dots around here, but the point is we've got the benefits um, and we've got the Lem Valley and all the churches there. We've got Draycott um, group, we've got each individual parish and they are all the benefits. Lem Valley is the benefits, Draycott is the benefits, uh, Stretton is the benefits, Birdingbury is the benefits, you know, but at the same time, Birdingbury is not Frankton, Frankton is not Borton, Granborough is not Willoughby, uh, Flecknoe is not Leamington Hastings. So we are the benefits, but we are distinct as well. Um, and I think that's important to remember as we think about our mission. Uh, I'm gonna shut the PowerPoint out because we've come to the end of my slides. So you can see, you can see all of my face now. So, yeah. so sorry, going back. So we've got these distinct roles and we're distinct, but we're the same. And that's important that we remember that as we go about our mission, because our mission if we go back to the acronym uh, that we all know so well from now, is a words, W-O-R-D-S, which is worship, outreach, relationships, discipleship, and service. So we are eight distinct churches, um, and as distinct churches, we have eight different buildings. Actually, we've got 10 different buildings in our benefits. We've got eight different communities that we serve, and actually we've got eight different skill sets within our congregations. But what does that look like? Well, I think it means acknowledging that there are things about us that are the same, and there are ways in which we need to function as a single unified entity. As churches, we're called to remember Jesus' death and resurrection by sharing communion. That's why in the new service pattern, every church building that we have hosts at least one communion service a month, whether that's BCP or common worship. Similarly, sung worship has been a part of the Christian tradition since the year dot. So every church, every church building, every church community will host uh, acts of worship that include sing sung worship of some description. Maybe the style of worship will change, uh, the style of singing and music might change, but sung worship is part of our worship, uh, whatever our community, whatever building uh, we meet in. Similarly, thinking more practically, we'll be developing a comm strategy that will rely on a single benefits e-newsletter. It will rely on creating a single benefits website to go alongside the single benefits Facebook page that we've got. And we're going to continue to try and centralise things like baptism preps so we can bring families from across the benefits together as they think about baptism. And of course, you've got the same ministry team um, serving across the whole benefits. And going back to our original definition, you share a vicar, uh, I'm going to try in the new service pattern to be at 50% of the services in every church building. Uh, so however much you try, you will not be able to escape me and my preaching at where, whichever building you try and hide from me. So all of this is done on that big pitch of ensuring that as a benefit, we're working together as a structure to keep doing the words things, to keep worshipping, to keep reaching out, to keep building relationships, to keep discipling and to keep serving. So we do that as a unified benefit in those ways uh, that I've just mentioned. But as well as being one single benefit, we're also eight distinct parishes, which will influence the way that each individual church community works and what they do. So each parish will continue to be rooted in the community in which it is, set, in which it is situated, which will be reflected in the midweek activities and in the relationships that individuals within the church have with their neighbours around them. Each parish is gonna remain the custodians of their own buildings, 
working with their local communities to keep the church buildings as a focal point in the village. The church buildings will be an offering as a space to every individual community to make use of. Each parish will continue to be shaped by the amenities that affect what happens in them. So that's why each parish that contains a school has an all sorts meeting in its monthly pattern. Decisions about where we held the different services were based on the individual context of each church. So uh, before I come to an end now, I wanna quickly go back to the Trinity uh, because actually words, that words acronym that we have describes what our mission as a church is. But actually those five words actually describe what the Trinity does. Uh, so if we look at that, I'm going to throw some Bible verses at you. In terms of worship, John 17, verse 1, uh, says this. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son as your, that your son may glorify you. So within that relationship of the Trinity, the Father is seeking the son's glorification, who seeks the Father's glorification, who seeks the Holy Spirit's they're glorifying each other, their actions ensure each other are glorified. And then outreach, uh, going back to the Acts passage, which you're so familiar with, Acts 1 verse 8, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the Holy Spirit is there to empower the disciples to be Jesus's witness those distinct roles uh, that the parts of the Trinity have in salvation history. Uh, all about, I mean, they all play a part in outreach, in bringing people into the community. Each one has a role to play. So the Trinity does outreach. And similarly, relationships, we can see the Holy Spirit is the, the Holy Trinity is the perfect relationship. If you think back to Genesis 1, uh, verse 26, we see God creating humanity and he says this, then God said, let us make mankind in our own image. He's talking in the plural. And actually when we read through the Genesis account, we see um, the fact that God talks about himself in the plural, the Holy Spirit, the Son, the Father are all part of creation and that process of creating. Um, and they do it together in relationship. Then discipleship, uh, John 20, 21, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Jesus is telling them that God, the Father has sent him to disciple them, to teach them and to build them up. And he's sending them on to go and make disciples. And the Holy Spirit is going to enable and equip that. So discipleship is a key part of what the Trinity does. And then finally, uh, Matthew 20, 28, Jesus says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Holy the Trinity serve, Jesus puts it explicitly here, he came to serve, but actually they serve each other. So I just wanna close by finishing and thinking about what I said about worship, how the Father and the Son glorify each other. Because actually that's really helpful for us as a benefit of eight churches to think about that relationship of glorifying. Because obviously we are here to glorify God, aren't we? Each individual church is there to point out and glorify God. But that symbiotic relationship that's described in the Trinity, the Father glorifying the Son, the Son glorifying the Father, and the Holy Spirit being glorified and glorifying as well, that is actually a great model for us to think about as a benefit, as eight churches. Because actually, if one of our churches in the benefit flourishes, then we all flourish in a way, don't we? And similarly, if one church in our benefice is struggling, then actually that impacts all of us and we all struggle. And that's why it's really important that we can get this, our heads around this seemingly possibly eight but one, because actually when we all flourish, we, we want all of us to flourish. And we do that by working together. We do that by pooling our resources so each individual church can be a powerful Christian witness uh, within the parish that it is situated. So I hope that has cleared things up rather than just muddied the waters. Um, on the way day now, we'll be splitting into groups to think about this a little bit more. Then later on in the day, we'll be thinking a little bit about names 
um, and we'll have a little bit of space to think more practically about what the strategy might look like going forwards. Uh, videos will appear on our social media feeds, um, summing up some of that other conversation that's gone on, uh, but they're, those later ones are going to be a bit more responsive, um, so it'll, there'll be a bit of a delay. Uh, but this is what I will say to people as we start the day. Uh, so I hope um, I hope it's been helpful. I hope you can feel like you've been part of it by seeing this video. And thank you for bearing with me.